welcome to my youtube channel please be sure to subscribe to my channel and also do not forget to press the bell icon so you never miss any video tutorial published by me welcome back to my youtube channel converse biology so students in the last video we studied about how exactly tr electron transport chain takes place we learned about how electrons are transferred within the various complexes of electron transport chain of mitochondria and how h plus that means protons are pumped now in this video uh, we will discuss about the steps which take place later on life once h plus has been pumped uh, to inner intermembrane space of mitochondria then what happens how exactly atp synthase which is complex 5 of etc uh, synthesizes atp from those h plus so first of all let us understand the structure of atp synthase which is known as f0 f1 because it has two uh, two subunits two parts and it is also as already said it is also known as complex so f1 first of all let us discuss f1 sub unit f1 has nine further nine sub units which has three alpha sub units three these are alpha sub units the, the whole structure in red color except for um, this delta sub unit it is f not whereas this structure this this and this this and this delta is f1 sub unit so three alpha sub units 1 2 3 3, 3 beta sub units 1 2 3 this in uh, in white color these are alpha sub units in blue color it is beta sub units three beta sub units so totally six and seven this gamma sub units sub unit which is indicated in Uh, uh, in green color, the, the it it spans from here to here, and delta subunit here in red color, and epsilon subunit here in blue color again. So these are nine subunits of F one. Now let us have a look at F not subunit of ATP synthase. which has for the three subunits a b and c and a subunit is only one this is a subunit from where h plus moves it has pores from h plus moves for movement of h plus from ims to matrix and b2 1 and 2 they, they both are b2 subunits this one and this one and c 10 to 12 sub units this this portion has like 10 sub units like this 1 2 and backward on the backward direction also there are uh, almost 10 to 12 sub units so that's about the structure of atp synthase that is f not and f was f1 or complex fifth now let us discuss how exactly it makes the atp from the movement of h plus ions so h plus ion will move from its gradient like from higher from higher side to lower side so this is a passive process like it will move automatically it doesn't require any energy to do so before that uh, before we discuss about how it leaves let us understand which one of the units of atp synthase are rotatory sub units which can rotate to generate um to generate for stock right and which one are stationary sub units like which do not rotate at all they are fixed on their position so this gamma epsilon c 10 to 12 these rotate like this gamma epsilon and c 10 to 12 these rotate then 
then only torque is generated we will discuss all this um, in binding change mechanism just now after completing all this now we uh, let us see what are the stationary subunits which do not move at all a a b2 delta alpha 3 and beta 3 they are all stationary subunits they do not move this is um this is actually um c10 subunit which rotates gamma epsilon and gamma subunit and gamma subunit is very important because this is the subunit which interacts with beta subunits which which are the catalytic which have catalytic um, activity to make atps so now here i have written it for your perusal movement of h plus from ims h plus from ims to matrix leads to the rotation of rotator right these are the rotator rotatory subunit forms form rotator and the rotation of the rotator in turn develops torque torque means it is a kind of force which acts on 90 degree there is no need to go into that much of depth you just need to understand that some kind of force is generated when uh, when this gamma subunit the, uh, the one in green color will rotate then a torque will be generated in the beta subunit here it is pertinent to mention that beta subunit has three uh, there are three parts of beta subunit 1 2 3 and all of them are identical exactly the same the uh, polypeptide chain is exactly the same but because of the rotation of gamma three different kind of conformations are produced in beta subunit so beta subunits um, are ad- identical however because of the torque generated by uh, gamma subunit it can get converted into three conformations so as already said beta subunit is the main catalytic subunit it is the main catalytic subunit that synthesizes atp from adp and inorganic phosphate i have indicated it over here and also the top causes three conformational changes in the beta subunit which are open so one of the configurations is open i will discuss these configuration in binding change mechanism just mechanism just now so right now i'm just telling you the names open loose and tight so these will these are the three conformations produced conformational changes produced in the beta subunit due to the torque generated by gamma subunit so now students let us discuss binding change mechanism which talks about how exactly h plus of movement takes place uh, movement of h plus ions take place and how these open loose and tight conformations look like and how much a, a h plus will generate one atp right so let us discuss that so students now let us understand binding change mechanism of atp synthesis which occurs due to the catalytic activities of three beta subunits so all these beta alpha and beta subunits have a different catalytic binding site for atp adp right so as soon as h plus is pumped from ims to matrix it it creates torque as i already discussed which leads to the conformational changes in the beta subunits one conformation is open like this one this one will be open because it is empty loose it has adp catalytic site which can bind adp plus inorganic phosphate this is loose because it has adp plus inorganic phosphate now tight conformation is this one which has atp so 
it already has all this but the atp even after being synthesized is not released from the beta subunit um, unless h plus um, generates torque now if we will see here adp plus inorganic phosphate are there in the catalytic side of alpha and beta subunit and now atp has been synthesized now h plus pumping will lead to the release of the atp so that's how atp will be formed so these are the three these are the three conformations of the same alpha and beta subunits now let me tell you this atp synthesis takes place due to the different conformational changes in the beta subunit induced by h plus movement that i have discussed so many times right now the three conformations are interconvertible like they can be changed into one one into another like here red one is in this um, this leaf like form but here it has changed the form so these are basically interconvertible the conformations also nine hydrogen uh, protons are required for one atp synthesis by one beta subunit right so that means uh, nine at nine and the same nine h plus produce two more atps from different beta subunits so like if this one is using this beta subunit is using 9h plus this one if we consider this one it is using 9h plus then these two beta subunits all will also use same 9h plus ions that and they will produce one atp each like this one will produce one atp this one will produce one atp this one will produce one atp that means total 9h plus The, so we can easily infer that nine protons produce three ATPs. That is, that means three H plus are required for one ATP synthesis. Nine by three. Like one subunit does require nine H plus, but those H plus will also be utilized by the other beta subunits. Got it? So that's how. Now, from nine H plus ions, that means from nine hydrogens, um, nine protons, uh, three ATPs are synthesized. So, if we do nine by three, then we get three ATPs. From here, ATP is being released from the open, that means empty configuration of beta subunit. And if we will see here, torque is being generated over here. This this is the torque. this is rotating the subunit and atp is being produced from here here and here and h plus are moving from positive side that means ims to negative side that is to matrix so that's how also now for synthesis of atp from adp we we need adp right and the the adp is brought in to the matrix with the help of phosphate transporter and the phosphate transporter also requires one additional h plus so in total we need how much we need 10 h plus including the charge including the cost of transporting the nucleotide nucleotide is what adp basically and in order it phosphate and everything so that's how atps are produced with the help of atp synthase and the model is known as binding change mechanism or binding change model so that's how uh, uh, i hope it is clear how exactly uh, by the rotation produced by um h plus movement of h plus and subsequently by torque how exactly the three conformations are changing to produce atps so that's all about 
how exactly atps are being produced in the um, in the mitochondria with the help of complex 5 which is atp synthesis